let's talk Richard Nixon. Now, R Richard Nixon gets famous mostly in the 50s, believe it or not. He was vice president under President Eisenhower for a long time. <coughs> he ran in 1960 against John F. Kennedy and lost. And it took a break from politics for a while after that, but came roaring back in 1968 to win the Republican nomination and won the election in 68 pretty easily and was re-elected again in 72. If you look at the map for the election of 72 that I have in the PowerPoint, it was not a close election by any means. He won uh, pretty easily in 72, which might shock some of you, uh, but it was not a close election by any means. Now, Nixon, one of the things that he's most famous for is Vietnam, and we'll talk about that for a little bit. And he was of the impression that the United States needed to kind of try to slowly back out of Vietnam, slowly leave things in the hands of the Vietnamese. And he called that Vietnamization. And his goal was you train up the southern Vietnam army enough that they can handle it themselves, and then slowly you, the Americans can pull out. Uh, it doesn't sound like a bad idea, and it, it might sound familiar. You know, you've heard th similar things about Iraq and Afghanistan and things like that most lately. Um, the other thing is he was very good at trying his hardest to ease the Cold War, to ease those tensions. And in fact, he had the SALT treaties, or the Strategic Arms Limitations Treaties, S-A-L-T. And it was an agreement that there would only be certain numbers of major weapons and arms and things like that, which is an effort to sort of ease the tension, ease the fears on both sides. Also, he was famous for shuttle diplomacy, as in, we are going to go to these different countries and speak to them and maybe work with them as best we can. Very famously, um, Henry Kissinger, who was in Nixon's cabinet, went to China with Nixon. Nixon was the first president to have gone to China at all. And so he did try that way. And I think that Nixon probably would have a better legacy than he does if it weren't for the thing that defines his president, more or less, and that is Watergate, right? All of you have probably heard about the Watergate scandal, uh, but what it was is he was the Republican nominee, and the party had decided that they were going to go to the Democrat election headquarters in 72 and bug the phones and see what information they could find out. Now here's the thing, it was completely unnecessary. Nixon was winning the election by a landslide. They didn't need extra inside information from the Democrats, but they did it. The people that were trying to bug the Democrat headquarters at the Watergate Hotel got caught. And that wouldn't have been such a big deal, but Nixon got caught up in it. He got caught trying to cover it up. And when it finally came out that it went all the way up to Nixon and that they had proof that it did because he taped everything that happened in the White House, in the Oval Office, um, then he resigned and he quit because he realized very quickly that if he did not quit, he would be accused of a crime and would end up being kicked out of office. So he left office early. He left in 1974 and it was Gerald Ford that took over for him. And interestingly enough, Gerald Ford was not his vice president the whole time. His first vice president was Spiro Agnew. Spiro Agnew quit and he called on Ford to take the vice president spot and when Nixon quit, Ford became president and he was never elected. So it was a very weird situation. So for more